It's been a very interesting summer, I'd say, for you guys. You uh, have a number one song to your credit now with Pumped Up Kicks. You have a top 10 album, Torches. What has that done um, to your everyday life? I mean, you'd still be touring, you'd still be in a band, but have, have you noticed a change since you've blown up? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've been really busy uh, this year because of all the good things that are happening. So, um, you know, we've been playing much bigger places. There's a lot more people and uh, at our shows, you know, which is cool. Well, but uh, we're getting a lot less sleep. Um. <laughs> which is not cool. I, <laughs> I appreciate sleep a lot. Well, you guys originally were scheduled to play at Congress, really cool venue, uh, relatively small. That sold out right away. Moved you across the street to Rialto, and good news, that show has sold out tonight as well. So, I mean, that is a testament to the, the, really the power of Pumped Up Kicks and the entire album. We can't wait to see it tonight. Thanks hey, you guys. Play. We're here with Foster the People at the Vitamin Water Uncapped Live Lounge with KFMA. Uh, thanks again for coming to Tucson. Let's talk about the album Torches for a second. Uh, in listening to it, I think it's all over the place. you kind of got the folks who Pumped Up Kicks. You've got some disco influence maybe, maybe like a... Uh, I don't know, like a European disco influence, if, if that's safe to say. Yeah. Um, what are some of your influences? Who who were you listening to what, when you uh, wrote the album? Uh, I think the album's really just a conglomeration of influences growing up, you know. Um, you know, Brian Wilson, Beach Boys play sure. a big role, big influence. If Aphex Twin, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of the more glitched out electronic stuff. Um, I was really influenced by him when I was younger and uh, you know, and Bowie and Blur and you know, a lot of a lot of Brit, a lot of sure. British stuff, you know, ELO. Well, I think you just kind of summed up the album in a, in a nutshell and it, your influence is Beach Boys to Aphex Twin. That's kind of mm. uh, two, uh, two polar opposites. <laughs> we can, uh, you know, we'll go to the audience in a second to ask a couple questions. If you have any, don't be shy. Um, Blur, you've mentioned one of your favorite bands um, ever. Like, how have they contributed? Is it kind of, was it Damon Albarn? Is it Gorillaz that, that have done that? Is it? I mean... Everything that that guy touches is gold, honestly. Uh, I like the gr the gorillas a lot, but Blur, um, I just play. I, I just love like their songwriting. You know, it's really quirky, really intelligent, and, and accessible. But they're also one of the few bands that I think kind of just did whatever they wanted to do. They had right. a really, you know, they had a super punk rock facet to their music, and then they had you know stuff like you know, uh, um, girls and boys. It's right. like way more, you know, electronic and then park life, you know, it's kind of everything in between. So, I mean, you know, they, they, they're, they're a versatile band. Um, yeah, they're just, they're, they're great. Well, I would assume if you're in the audience, you have torches. If not, you should definitely pick it up because it is, it's all over the place. It's an amazing album. Mark, uh, you've got a kind of an interesting backstory in that you, uh, came to LA a few years ago, basically to, to try to do what you were doing now. Um, and in between, we're, we're writing songs. I mean, tell us a little bit about that story and how this has come to be. Yeah, it's been, you know, I've been in L.A. for almost uh, nine years now. So I moved there uh, right after high school and um, just, you know, just writing songs, playing in different bands and uh, just trying to carve out a career, you know. And in the meantime, just, you know, I delivered pizzas and made lattes and telemarketed and uh, folded clothes and... Uh, sold kitchen cutlery uh door to door um you know just to to make ends meet so you know it's been it's been a long journey and and uh but in the meantime it's just writing songs just writing songs that that was like my passion you know and uh just kind of building up this library and so when we formed the band had a lot of stuff already we could pull from and um you know i think that that is 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 a reason why things kind of happened for us pretty quickly well, I've read, and, and this is kind of cool that you uh, were actually, this doesn't happen often for musicians, you're actually encouraged by your, your dad or by your parents to come out and do this. Is that true? Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. I was, yeah, I was, uh, I was 17, uh, coming, you know, uh, going into senior year of high school and everybody, all my friends were, you know, applying for colleges and stuff and right. didn't know what I wanted to do. And he was like, why don't you go out to LA or New York and pursue music? And I, it's the first thing that made that. sense to me. <laughs> Yeah. Well, give give some props to Dad for that. Uh, yeah, let's ask the audience. Does, does the audience, do you have any questions for Foster the People really quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, where are you from originally? Uh, I grew up in Cleveland. Uh, hot fan of rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, it, apparently you need to go to L.A., though, to really at least get started. You can always move back to Cleveland if, if you so choose. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Why L.A.? 
Well, it's funny. I mean, I was born in California originally. Uh, I moved to Cleveland when I was five, and I always visited, you know, in the summers or whatever. I'd go back to California, and I think it was just something that I, you know, gosh, you know, gray winter after gray winter in Cleveland really gets into your bones. You know, I, I, I wanted to go to L.A. as opposed to New York to, to run from the snow. Yeah, yeah but this, totally. <laughs> today would discourage anyone from moving to Arizona, I think, if you're outside. Yeah. And you guys, overwhelmingly, I guess, it's probably time to talk about Pumped Up Kicks for a second. Probably okay. the biggest hit of the summer. And I think it's propelled you to literally be, and I'm not exaggerating here, the hottest band in the country right now, which is really cool. Pumped Up Kicks, let's talk about it. Uh, my two-year-old loves the song. I'm just really glad she doesn't know what it's about. Mm -hmm. um, it's the sweetest, most evil song I've ever heard. How did you come up with the concept, and, and was that purposeful to make it sound as sweet as it does, you know, behind the lyrics? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I tend to do that a lot, I think, um, you know, undercutting uh, darker lyrics with, you know, a joyful melody. Um, I mean, you know, that song, I, I, it's written in character, you know. I was just really kind of upset, like bothered by kind of the whole teen shooting spree thing that's been happening a lot in our country and um you know wanted to tell a story about it but really wanted to you know I told the story from the perspective of the kid that's going crazy basically um because I think you know when, you know when you're talking about bullying or when you, when you talk about things like that you know there's really there's two tragedies you know there's the tragedy of the kid that gets bullied in the first place and then you know if he makes some wrong decisions you know or, or depending on how he channels that can turn into a tragedy, you know, uh, on, a, on a bigger scale. Well, we, we actually experienced one of those right here in Tucson mm -hmm. in January, and, and, and this song is definitely, it's, it's struck a nerve, to say the least, yeah. and, and, it's, and it's definitely, you know, reacted uh, to people. Um, I guess let's go into that uh, Pumped Up Kicks, again, the number one song in the country. It's, it's definitely propelled you guys to uh, new heights. Before, before we go into it really quick, what are your uh, plans for the rest of the summer? You're touring, I assume. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna be in Australia in a couple of weeks. So we're playing some festivals in nice. in the UK and in Australia, and then uh, doing another fall tour in the US, and uh, doing like Lollapalooza and uh, Austin City Limits and all the cool yeah, festivals. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully, we'll see you guys back here again. Don't forget about us here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. Now that you've uh, blown up, honey. we love it here. Well, good, well, good. And you guys stayed at Congress last night. Is that stayed true? Stayed at Congress last night. I went into room two forty two for like an hour and turn off the lights <laughs> and said, hey, lady, <laughs> show yourself to me. All right, let's pass to the people. Vitamin water uncapped live.